Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about hemodynamics. Now, let's see the blood flow inside the blood vessels. How it is happening? Now the blood flow inside the blood vessels is going in the form of laminar fashion. It's going in the form of laminar blood flow. And I should say, you can clearly see here, see the water, whatever it's coming out, see it's more streamlined, right? Okay, it's not turbulent, it's not turbulent. It's very much streamlined. So in the same way, the blood which is moving inside the blood vessels is also streamlined. And this type of movement is called as a laminar blood flow. Which means, for example, even the blood is moving in the center of the blood, RBCs are there. Now, surrounding the RBCs, there are WBCs and platelets. So, uh, everything is going in a very proper fashion. Like, you know, there is proper streamlining. There is no turbulence. Okay. So, blood flow inside a blood vessel is laminar blood flow. Now, whether the fluid is going to go in the laminar fashion or turbulent fashion is determined by a number called as the Reynolds number. Reynolds number. If the Reynolds number of a fluid if it is less than 2000, now the fluid will go in the form of laminar fashion, laminar blood flow. If the Reynolds number if it is greater than 2000, the fluid will go in the form of turbulent fashion, turbulent fashion. Especially turbulence is going to be seen in anemia, okay, anemia. So in anemia, what happens, Reynolds number is more than 2000, so turbulence occurs. We will discuss that in a moment. But anyway, now let's discuss about the Poiseuille-Hagen's formula. So what exactly is this Poiseuille-Hagen's formula? telling us. So Poiseuille-Hagen's formula, it tells us blood flow is dependent on which factors. See blood flow is directly proportional to the pressure difference between the blood vessel and radius. For example, if radius increases, blood flow increases. If pressure difference increases, blood flow increases. I will give you an example. Don't worry. Now blood flow is inversely proportional to length of the blood vessel and viscosity of the fluid. Now for example, let's see here. First let's talk about the pressure difference. Imagine that this is a blood vessel. Okay, this is the point number A and point number B. Now, the pressure at the point number A is 50. And the pressure at the point number B is now 40. Now, will blood move or not? Just tell me. So, what is the pressure difference delta P? The delta P is 10, right? See, here it is 50, here it is 40. So, fluid will move from high pressure to low pressure, no doubt. So, what is the delta P value here? Delta P value is 10, sir. Okay, so fluid will move from high pressure to low pressure, no doubt. Now, let's imagine one more blood vessel. Okay, where again point number A, point number B. At the point number A, again it is 50. And at the point number B, the pressure is only 10. So, what is the delta P value? What is the pressure difference? The pressure difference is 40. The pressure difference is more or not? Now, in this condition also, there will be blood flow. But more blood flow, lot of blood is going the blood is going more fastly, the velocity of the blood is going to be more. So, blood flow is directly proportional to the delta P pressure difference. If more is the pressure difference, more blood flow, more blood flow and radius to the power of 4. If you increase the radius of a blood vessel, more blood flow will be, will be there, more blood flow will be there and this relationship is not like you know exactly directly proportional, directly proportional that to radius to the power of 4 which means for example, don't think like this. So, when radius doubles, blood flow is going to be double. No, this is not an exact linear relationship. Whenever radius doubles, whenever radius doubles, blood flow almost increases by 16 times. So that's what radius to the power of 4. For example, let's take an <coughs> uh, question. If the radius of the blood vessel, if it is doubling, see if the radius of the blood vessel, if it doubles, what happened to the amount of blood flow? Now, what usually student will think, ah, blood flow is directly proportional to the radius. If radius doubles, blood flow should be doubled. No, it's not something like that. It doesn't work something like that. See, this is the exact question came in one of the recent foreign medical graduate examinations. The exact question was asked. See, we know the formula. Blood flow is directly proportional to the radius to the power of 4. Now, what is happening to the blood flow? We know. What we have done, the blood flow is doubled. Okay, sorry, not blood flow is doubled. So, blood flow is directly proportional to the radius to the power of 4. Now, what happened to the radius? Radius is doubled. So, 2 to the power of 4. Okay, 2 to the power of 4. How much? 16 times. So, blood flow is going to increase by 16 times. When you double the radius, when you double the radius, what happens to the blood flow? Blood flow increases by 16 times. Okay, now later on I will ask you one question. Now, why there is increase in blood flow by 16 times? Why not 15 times? Why not 14 times? Why not 13 times? We will discuss. Don't worry. Okay. Now, if the radius of the blood vessel, if it triples, it, if it triples, what happened to the blood flow? If the radius triples, what happened to the blood flow? 
Blood flow is going to be increased by three times, triples? No. We know the formula. Blood flow is directly proportional to the radius to the power of four. So what we have done to the radius? We have done. We have tripled the radius. So three to the power of four. 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. Okay, that is 81 times. 81 times the blood flow is going to be increased. So, these are the two important uh, questions which I want you to know for your exam. Now, let's talk about the resistance inside the blood vessel. Okay, resistance. The relationship of resistance and also the blood flow. Okay. See, resistance is inversely proportional to the radius. Okay. So, what is the relationship between radius and resistance? inversely proportional so resistance and radius are inversely proportional which means if you increase the radius if you increase the radius resistance decreases so how this is going to be helpful for us now this is very much important why because in the previous slide here what i have explained to you when you double the radius when you double the radius blood flow increase by how many times 16 times my question to you why 16 times now you will get the answer see Resistance is inversely proportional to radius. Okay. Now, if radius doubles, what happened to ra uh, resistance? If radius doubles, what happened to resistance? Let's put everything in the formula. Resistance is inversely proportional to radius. Now, what is happening to the radius? Radius is doubled. So, what happened? 16 times. So, when you double the radius, when you double the radius, what happened to the resistance? Resistance in a blood vessel, resistant to the blood flow resistance decreases by 16 times that's why blood flow increases by 16 times so let's simple let's keep it simple something like this when you double the radius resistance falls by 16 times as there is decrease in the resistance by 16 times there is in the incre there is increase in blood flow by 16 times okay this is the point which i want you to know now after that see so when radius doubles resistance decreases by 16 times so blood flow increases by 16 times Okay, well and good. Now, let's see one more formula. See, what is the amount of blood flow in vessel A? Okay, what is the amount of blood flow in vessel A when compared to the vessel B? Okay, now, let's see. This is the vessel A and this is vessel B. Please make a correction. This is vessel B. Now, actually, here you have to ask something like this. What is the, uh, what is the blood flow in vessel B, B when compared to vessel A? Okay, small correction. What is the amount of blood flow in vessel B, you, you have to say me something like this. What is the amount of blood flow in this blood vessel? Now, what are the differences between these two blood vessels? There are two important differences which I want you to know. Sir, so, in A blood vessel, in A blood vessel, there is the radius, the radius is R. It's just R. Radius is R. But in vessel B, the radius is 2R, which means double the radius, double the radius. When compared to A, B is having double the radius. Now, second difference is A is having a length of L and the B is having a length of 2L, 2L. Now, what happens to the amount of blood flow? What usually student will think, a normal regular student will think, so double the radius, when they double the radius, how much time will be the blood flow in vessel B? There should be 16 times increase in the blood flow. But do you think that's going to happen now? No, that's not going to happen now. Because, see, it's not only the radius which is different, but also length is different. Here it is L, here it is 2L. We have discussed according to the poisley Higgins formula, length, length is inversely proportional to the blood flow. If more is the length of a blood vessel, the blood flow decreases. More is the length of a blood vessel, blood flow decreases. Now, see here, here it is 2L, here it is L. So, let's keep it in the formula. Blood flow is directly proportional to radius to the power of 4 but inversely proportional to length, inversely proportional to length. So, double the radius, 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2. Okay, so 16 divided by 2 is 8 times, not 16 times, 8 times. Now, when compared to A, in vessel B, there is 8 times more blood flow. There is 8 times more blood flow, not 16 times. For example, in both the cases, if it is L, for example, in both the cases, if it is L and L, length is same. Then here there will be 16 times more blood flow. But in our condition, the length is different as well as the radiuses are different. Okay. So these are the important points which I want you to know. These are the important points which I want you to know uh, regarding the hemodynamics, especially the poisley higgins formula. What is the relationship between the uh, blood flow with different, different 
uh, parameters. Now, let me ask you one thing. Blood flow is directly proportional to viscosity or indirectly proportional to the viscosity? Blood flow is indirectly proportional to the viscosity. When viscosity increases, for example, think something like this. Imagine a tube, imagine a tube. You kept some water into the tube. You kept some water into the tube. Now, water is going to go very fastly, right? Very simply, it will go. Okay, if there is a pressure difference, water will go from one end to the other end very easily. Now, just keep honey in the same tube. Honey, honey. Now, do you think this honey will also move with the same velocity? No, definitely not. So, what I am trying to put into your mind is, so if you increase the viscosity, like the honey, if the more viscous, for example, if the viscosity of the blood, if it increases, means blood flow decreases. You can ask me, what are the conditions in which the viscosity of blood increases, sir? Polycythemia, more number of RPCs, polycythemia. In polycythemia, what happened to blood flow? Blood flow decreases. Okay, because blood is having more viscosity. And what are the conditions in which the viscosity decreases? Anemia. In anemia, the blood is becoming more uh, fluid, more liquid. Like, you know, the blood is more, like, you know, more liquid. Okay, so viscosity decreases, so blood flow increases. Hyperdynamic circulation is seen. Okay, hyperdynamic circulation is seen in anemia. Okay, guys, hope the video is helpful. So, we have discussed hemodynamics also. See you in our next video. Thank you.